A major in Gobriel Elementary Schools have the largest number of active COVID-19 outbreaks compared to all other settings across Ontario. And now we're learning that those who already are or who are about to turn 12 this year are falling behind in the race to get vaccinated. There is nothing people can do that is going to be more powerful to put this pandemic behind us than to get vaccinated. Toronto's mayor delivering an early holiday present to parents eager to vaccinate their children, giving them a timeline today for when he expects the COVID-19 vaccine will be ready to roll out for children aged 5 to 11. By, say, the beginning of the month, uh, you know, a couple of weeks from now that we'll be able to get under with. As we look ahead, the province and public health experts are keeping an eye on some numbers that are raising eyebrows. Of those born in 2009 who either are turning or turn 12 this year, 75.4% have one shot and just 68% are fully vaccinated. That's about 10% behind any other group aged 12 to 17. That 12 and under group really is sort of um, disproportionately also testing positive. I think they're about 12% of the population and 20% of cases. So we know that they're disproportionately um, uh, contracting COVID. So why are we seeing lower vaccination rates in eligible younger children? Kate Allen, a postdoctorate fellow at the Center for Vaccine Diseases at U of T, believes it's because those who were turning 12 this year were initially excluded from eligibility. In May, that's when the 12 to 17 year olds became um, eligible. And then it wasn't until August that we said that sort of group, that turning uh, 12 group, we said they would be eligible as well. So I do think that lag has to do with um, sort of the, the lower uh, percentage vaccine. It has to do with that lag in um, eligibility. There are many ways for families to speak with experts and have their questions answered. Is it safe? Should I do it? Should I wait? Pediatrician Julia Orkin is one of the doctors at SickKids who is available to speak to families who have questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. Families often call asking around short-term side effects, long-term side effects, how the vaccination uh, came to be approved, the safety. She agrees there's no reason to be too concerned about the drop-off in vaccine rates for those born in 2009. But getting factual, science-based information out to families is key. It's important that people have concern, but that they can follow that up with correct information. So a very common question we get again and again is around fertility. And there's absolutely no scientific reason right now or evidence that states that getting your COVID-19 vaccine affects fertility. If you'd like to speak with Dr. Orkin or her colleagues here at SickKids, you can call them on the number below on your screen. You can also book an appointment online. We have their website information at citynews.ca slash extras.